Hello world, RTX 4090 is a password cracking beast, hackers steal sensitive documents from Iran's nuclear program, and pro-Russian DDoSers are apparently getting paid. That's all coming up in today's roundup of cybersecurity tech news. The RTX 4090 has made headlines for various reasons, and now there's something new. Turns out it's pretty good at cracking passwords. For example, it can brute force an eight character long Windows NTLM password hash in just 42 minutes. And by the way, that's a password consisting of upper and lowercase characters, numbers, and even the top row of special characters. So when benchmarks show that the 4090 is twice as good as Nvidia's previous flagship, well, that seems to apply to password cracking as well. However, should you care? I mean, how relevant even is password cracking? Well, for a hacker to even attempt to crack one of your passwords, they first have to obtain its hashed version, probably from a data breach. They'd then load it into hash cracking software like Hashcat. And at this point, they're probably not going to do an exhaustive brute force against every single possible password combination, because that would just take ages. And cyber criminals much prefer low hanging fruit, so they'll instead perform a dictionary attack, testing hash passwords against a word list of the top few million most common passwords. The problem is that as GPUs get faster, the definition of low hanging fruit changes. Miscreants can reach higher up the metaphorical password tree and crack more passwords. To put it into perspective, the 4090 is eight times faster than a 1080 at calculating hashes. Granted, the 1080 was released six years ago, but in that time, the hashing methods used by companies to scramble your passwords likely won't have changed. This all makes the idea of setting up a password cracking rig an increasingly attractive proposition for cyber criminals. Sure, it'd cost quite a bit to pick up a few 4090s, assuming you can even get your hands on them, but it's not like cyber miscreants don't have money to spend. In a previous video, we saw a case of hackers willing to burn $15,000 on drones just so they could have an attempt at landing Wi-Fi hacking gear on the roof of a financial company. And unfortunately, there is a lot of money to be made from a correct password. Remember the colonial pipeline hack, which caused fuel shortages? It's thought that whole drama was caused by a careless employee who reused their passwords to a valuable corporate VPN on a site which then suffered a data breach. The miscreants who realized how valuable that password was earned a $4.4 million ransomware payments from the colonial pipeline company. And reusing passwords is arguably worse than just having individually insecure passwords. Let's say, for example, you were using the password pizza123 on a website which suffered a data breach. The worst that could happen is that your account on that particular site would just get pwned. But if you reused pizza123 across a dozen different accounts, then miscreants would be able to do quite a bit of damage. And this isn't theoretical. This is pretty much what happened to the news website Fast Company last month. They reused the password pizza123 across a dozen different WordPress accounts, giving a miscreant the ability to vandalize their website and send rather rude Apple News notifications to all of their subscribers. So yeah, reusing passwords is a bad idea. And the fact that many people do is probably one of the main reasons why a cyber criminal would even want a password cracking rig in the first place. There are more niche uses, of course. For example, an attacker might want to crack the password to your Windows PC. A case of this was recently documented by Symantec, where hackers were targeting Hong Kong government organizations with a Mimikatz, a tool capable of pulling password hashes from memory. Iran's nuclear energy program is run by the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran. Now, these guys are pretty controversial, so much so that a decade ago, Israel and the US collabed to target Iran's nuclear program in what came to be known as one of the most famous hacks of all time. But now, Iran's nuclear program is back in hacking news for different reasons. A few days ago, a hacktivist group calling themselves Black Reward, which was only recently set up alongside all the protests going on in Iran, hacked an email server run by Iran's atomic energy organization. They stole 100,000 emails, totaling 50 gigabytes, after which they sent a mass email to all the organization's employees with an ultimatum for the Iranian government. Release all political prisoners within 24 hours, or we'll publish the contents of your email server for the world to see. It didn't come as much surprise that the government wasn't willing to negotiate, and so Black Reward published the data dump, which turns out to be pretty spicy. Included in the dump are photos and videos of Iran's nuclear sites, technical drawings, 
photocopies of the passports belonging to Russian engineers working in Iran's nuclear program, and even documents discussing the best way to transport radioactive material between Russia and Iran. This is definitely one of the more interesting data dumps I've covered, but exactly how useful it would be to Iran's adversaries is kinda hard to say. Whilst it doesn't look like there's been any bombshell discoveries resulting from this leak, it is quite fresh, so there might be some useful nuggets that just haven't been discovered yet. I mean, there are a hundred thousand emails to go through. But who is Black Reward? This group only appeared about a month ago, with their debut hack being the defacement of various Iranian websites. Since then, they've been rather busy. They sent 5 million text messages to Iranians, urging them to join the protests. They also hacked an email server belonging to Iranian state TV network Press TV, setting up a dark website where people can explore those emails. And of course, their latest operation being the hack of the Atomic Energy Organization, which published a statement in response to their email server being hacked. They claim that it was perpetrated by a specific foreign country, which by proxy, of course, is an allegation that Black Reward is state-sponsored. How likely is that? Well, this could just be an empty accusation, illustrating Iran's unwillingness to accept that their own citizens may want to work against them, which many of them obviously do. But in fairness, a couple of countries have gone after Iran's nuclear program before, so a round two wouldn't surprise anyone. But is there any real hard evidence that Black Reward is state-sponsored? Well, no. That being said, this group does seem like it's run rather professionally, almost, dare I say, suspiciously so. Their tweets and telegram posts are written in a very direct way, there's no memes or childish insults. The dark website they set up to host leaked emails from Press TV is very clean and well put together, and in their hack of the Atomic Energy Organization's email server, they even went so far as to go through the dump and clean it of advertising spam and phishing emails, publishing the juicy bits only. None of this is in any way proof that Black Reward is state-sponsored, but they do contrast themselves with pretty much all hacktivist groups we've seen on this channel before, which tends to be quite chaotic. Whoever is behind this group seems to be experienced, thoughtful about how they conduct themselves. It looks like they started the group with a plan. And Black Reward has been, well, rewarded for their efforts. They've gained 100,000 followers on Twitter and 50,000 subscribers on Telegram. And with the rate at which these guys are pumping out operations, I think we can expect to see more from them soon. There has been an interesting development in the Russo-Ukrainian DDoSing saga, which I've covered quite a bit here on this channel. Pro-Ukrainian groups have been DDoSing the websites of Russian businesses, and vice versa, ever since the war kicked off. The DDoS attacks are usually short-lived and don't have much real-world effects other than just to make headlines. However, in what seems to be a first, one of the pro-Russian groups engaged in all of this is paying people to take part, as in, they're handing out crypto payments to people who DDoS pro-Ukrainian organizations. They have a price fund consisting of a few thousand dollars, which is dispersed after successful attacks, the latest of which was a coordinated attack against American airports, which I covered in a recent video. The top prize awarded for that campaign was 80,000 rubles, or $1,300. It's not much. Well, I mean, who wouldn't want an extra $1,300? But this isn't headline-making amounts of cash that's going to attract an army of script kiddies to become pro-Russian DDoSers. However, where that money comes from is a bit of a mystery. It doesn't look like they're crowdfunding it, and I think it's quite probable that this group has some kind of a benefactor, perhaps a Russian cyber criminal who just has money to burn. Or I suppose there is a chance that there just is no money, and this is all a ploy just to get people to join in. Regardless, miscreants who want to get involved have to turn to a Telegram bot called a DDoSier, which will ask them how they want to get paid, before it generates an executable, which can be run on Windows, and a couple Python scripts for Mac and Linux. I couldn't find any specific terms regarding how people are paid. The Telegram channel seems to focus more so on posting pictures of bears. DDoSier was launched in August, and it seems to take inspiration from the Ukrainian equivalent tool called Disbalancer. The concept is pretty much the same, the only differences being Disbalancer targets Russian organizations, and their users aren't paid. And I feel like I have an obligation to repeat my stance on this for all the new people here. Getting involved in all of this is a bad idea. Firstly, it's 
probably illegal. Secondly, even if it isn't, your ISP could disconnect you. And thirdly, even if we disregard points one and two, downloading any level of hacking tool which runs on obfuscated code and gives some unknown person direct control over your internet connection will always be a bad idea. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, the complete solution for all your PCB fabrication and on-demand 3D printing needs. From standard PCBs to the more advanced varieties, PCBWay provides granular control over every element of your PCB. With super fast turnaround times, you'll be spending more time creating and less time waiting on packages. PCBWay also offers on-demand machining. From CNCing and sheet metal cutting to 3D printing and injection molding, there's an array of materials to choose from and, of course, super fast turnaround times. Sign up now using the link in the description to get a $5 coupon which can be used site-wide. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.